latest news. Are you glad to be back in America? I had a delightful time in Europe, but I'm a little homesick and mighty glad to be back. Well, uh, will you tell the Fox Movie Tone audience just how it feels to be the richest girl in the world? Everything has its disadvantages, you know. Is it true your grandmother left you 60 million? Oh, you forget the inheritance tax. What about your romance with the Prince of Wales? Is what? he a good dancer? If you marry the Count Tereni, will you live in his castle in Hungary? Well, I've never even met the Count Tereni. Will you marry an American or European? I don't know. Well, now, Miss Newlands, one more question. It may seem a bit personal, but... The American public is very anxious to know why you sailed for Europe and left Robin and Drake at the altar. That's a question I cannot answer. Well, just open the door. What are you going to do with a name like that? Well, I just asked for a simple question. She certainly knows her answers, doesn't she? Sorry, miss. You can't ride in this. This is for baggage only. Pretend I'm a trunk. Take me down. Where to, miss? Steerage, please. Okay. Please give me a landing card. Well, what's your name, miss? Nunes. Beatrice Nunes. Oh, miss Nunes. Why, I, I didn't recognize you. I hope you had a pleasant trip, Miss Nunes. Yes, thank you. I presume you're glad to be back, Miss Nunes. Well, of course I am. Oh, there you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, lady. All right, next. Excuse me, uh, you left your purse. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, uh, your heel. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, our heel. She's a beautiful heel. Hello, Jack. Hello, Kelsey. How are you? Oh, come on, Tom. Come on, Stan. How's the boy? <laughs> okay, Charlie. You're a Tom. You can go in, Mr. Coombs. Mr. Palkey will see you. Hey, what's the matter? We're next. We were waiting at three hours to see Mr. Palkey. Why don't you do something about this thing, eh? I guess you don't remember, but I had this letter from Mr. Palkey. He's busy. Park yourself over there and wait for your turn. You two guys waiting to see somebody? Yeah, we're waiting to see Mr. Pelkey. Well, you'll have a long wait. Rico, I want to tell you one thing. We make a big mistake when we leave Italy. Now we're in America, the money, that's all gone, and we must dig the ditch. Come on, you guys, line up. Oh, yeah. Hey. 
Hey, you. Hey, you what? You can't do that. We'll go ahead of you. Tell him we'll go ahead of him. Please, mister. We were here first. So what? Uh, look, look, look. They, they all go ahead of us. Say, you guys American? Sure, we're American. We're in America, ain't we? Who was the first president of the United States? George Washington. That's wrong. Here the link. That's right. Hey, you guys belong to Union. What do you mean, Union? Have you got a car? What's a car? You can't get a job without a car. Well, where do you get this car? You see that little joint over there with all them Union marks in front of it? Yes. Yeah. Go over and tell that guy you want a car. With a car, you're all set. You can get a job, you can vote, you can do anything in this country. Tell the guy I sent you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, Rico. How to do? Uh, the boss across the street say we can come here and get a union card. You got a union card? No, no, we don't get union suit. No, we don't want a union suit. Want a union card? Vun chong na lai tui lo, tui lang tui lo, tui lang tui lo. Ang la ket la, tui lang 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 Mister, open the window, please. Sir. Open up the window, please. Open hey, the window. cut it out. Cut it out. What do you want to do? Break it down? We stand in line for a whole hour. They make it a fun to us. We come here, the windows are closed. We get all the men we need. Well, please, mister, please. Please, sir. Please. Open the door, please. Please open the door. Are you guys looking for trouble? No, we got a letter from Mr. Pelkey. Pelkey? Okay, show me the letter, Rico. Sure. Here, mister. Friends of Pelkey's, eh? Sure, good friends. <laughs> All right, change your clothes, come back right away, and I'll put you to work. <laughs> thank you, but thank you very much. Thanks. Give it more push on that downstroke. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know an easier way than that. How? Next time that foreman comes along, ask him for a sewer stretcher. Hey, what's a sewer stretch? Well, it stretches those walls. It makes that pit work easier. Ask him for one. Thanks, we will. Yeah. Hey, you guys, get back to work. Come on, you guys, get busy. What do you think this is, a picnic? No, sir. But well, we'd like to use your sewer stretcher. My what? The sewer stretcher, you know, to stretch them up the walls and make them bulge and make it work easy. <laughs> you know, the sewer stretcher, eh? Get back to work before I wrap that pick around your neck. Come on, get me. Yes, sewer stretcher. <laughs> Place, eh? A funny place. 
We work all the morning, and now they don't let us eat. They tell us in America, everybody got the same a chance. <laughs> That's a whole lot of baloney. Maybe this ain't America after all. You can't tell. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah, well, I'm hungry, too. I can't work when I'm hungry. I'm gonna quit. Hey, you, you ain't hungry. You don't need something to eat. But you need some dynamite to explode inside of you. You got a backbone just like a wet macaroni. Let everybody push you and shove you and you say, yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, I'm disgusted. Hey, you guys, come on, get busy. One of you come up here. Yes, sir. Yeah, just one of you. Come on, get a move on. Look, you. Take this and go up there and stop the traffic. Stop what? The traffic. When I blow this whistle, <whistles> wave that red flag and keep them back. Will this stop them? You'll bet your life it will. When you wave that, the whole government is behind you. They got to stop. And if they run over you, don't worry. You got the law on your side. Now go on, get up there. Hey, you. Get busy. Hey, you, what's the big idea? Go ahead. Board ship. You see, I broke the heel off my slipper, and this kind gentleman wishes to return it to me. You can have it, lady. Oh, no. No, no, no. You make it. Now, now will you let us go by? Sorry, lady, but you must wait. I'm going on if I have to drive this car myself. You're going to stay here and like it. Yes, sir. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Better let us get by. Hello, Dwight. Hello, Jim. Going to races? I'd like to. 
The saloon won't let us by. We're late now. Hey, Flagman. Let us pass. We're in a hurry. Take your time. Get out of the way. I'll have you fired. You stay where you are until I tell you to go. You know who I am? I don't care if you're the mayor. I am the mayor. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay. Let him by. <laughs> All right, lady. You can go now. You're blocking traffic. Thank you. Go ahead, Clifford. Just for getting fresh, you go last. That's so we'll see about this. Foreman! Foreman, come here! Hey! Pick up that sign! What? You heard what I said. Pick up that sign. I got the law behind me, and you do as I say. What's the matter here? This guy said he's a mayor. You dumb cluck, of course he's the mayor. How dare this flagman humiliate me? Why am I being detained? Oh, sure you can get by, Mr. Trotter. Of course you can. I'd have stopped the blast in a minute if I'd have known it was you, Your Honor. Oh, somebody else suffer for this. Pick yourself a shovel, you dumb foreigner. Do you hear me? Pick yourself a shovel. Stop on the mayor of the city. Give me that flag. Hey, you. Come here. What's your number? One, six, seven, eight, two. Remember that, Joe? Yes, sir. Your name? Enrico Scaffa. With two Fs. Mark it down so you don't forget it. That's it. Hey, what's the matter with you? You wave a little flag, you think you're so big, you punch the boss, you push the people. What's the matter? You go crazy? Shut up or I'll punch you. I'm just beginning to find out what it's all about. Hey, you. You're fired. Get your things and get out of here before I have you pinched. Why, hey, look, no, 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 punch you the boss again. You're fired, too. For me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Hey, Rico. What's the matter? We can't go in there. They cross out one, they cross out again. No, they won't. Come on. <laughs> Are you looking for trouble? Yes. <clears throat> come on, come on. Come on, take it easy. Here he is, Your Honor. I think this is the fellow you want to see. Yes, that's the fellow I want to see. All right, boys. Your name's Scaffer? Yes, sir. Don't you know the mayor of this city has the right of way? Why didn't you hold up that blast yesterday and let me by? I didn't know you was the mayor. And if you had known I was the mayor, I'd have stopped you anyway. You would, huh? What do you think you are? What do you do if I sock you in the jaw? I'd sock you right back. <laughs> Scammer, you got character, backbone. You're fearless and you look honest. I need men like you. I got a job for you, a new job. My secretary here will show you to your office. Take him away, Joe, fix him up. Follow me. This way. You too. East too? You. Oh, that's what I say. This is your office. It's a little dusty, but we'll have it cleaned up. There's your desk and there's your chair. Sit down. Nice place you got to here. Yes. What kind of a job is this? You just sit there and keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. There's just one thing for you to remember. You're working for the city now. That means the law is on your side. Just keep that in mind. What kind of work do I do? Mr. Scaffer, I hereby appoint you as fifth assistant executive secretary to the executive secretary of the mayor of New York. That's $35 a week. It's not much of a job, but it's a start. Well, uh, what do you want me to do now? Oh, uh, nothing. Say, can I help him? Yes, you help him. Make yourself at home, boys. I'll see you later. Giuseppe, it's a wonderful invention. <laughs> it's a good country, eh? Things sure happen quick in America. <laughs> Mr. Scaffer? It is one. 
Oh, Mr. Scarpa, how do you spell your name? With one F or two Fs? With two Fs. Two Fs. Okay, I'll fix that. <laughs> by appointment. Mr. Scarpa, my Luigi, he is not really such a bad boy. I know. Now, don't cry anymore, Mother. I'll take care of it. I'll go down to the tombs myself. Oh, you promise me? You sure? Sure. Now, you just leave it to oh. me and everything will be all right. Oh, grazie tanto, signore. Le sarò grata per tutta la vita. Non dimenticherò mai. Grazie. Now, you stop worrying. I'll have him home at the dinner table tonight. Oh, sì. Si, grazie tanto. Well, I feel sorry for that old lady. Eh, he's not such a bad kid. What's next, Toots? The DA's on his way over. And the mayor's after you to move away from that awful neighborhood you live in, and he's right. I like it down there. Well, I agree with the mayor, too. You're a bigger man now. You've got a position. Shouldn't be living down there under the elevator, and besides, that noise drives me crazy. Yes, he's right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, both of you. I started down there four years ago, and I'm going to stay there. The minute I move away from my own people, they move away from me. So if it's good enough for me to live down there among them, it's good enough for His Honor to have me. Write him the same letters you did before. Change the date and sign my name to it. Okay. Hello, Sully. Hi. Hello, Rico. Hello, Tony. What's on your mind? The east side branch of the Hudson Investment Trust is blowing up. What? They just backed up a truck and took the books away. What for? Someone on the inside has been doing some monkey business with the dough. No telling how much. Up in the millions. Where are the books now? They're on their way to the state examiner for a special audit. Get me Hilburn, the state examiner, right away. Boy, if that corporation blows up, it blows up right in my face. That branch is in my district. Those are my people. Hello, Hilburn. This is Scarpa. I heard you lifted the books of the Hudson Trust on the east side. What's the trouble? We've heard some ugly rumors, Mr. Scarpa. We're going to investigate. Well, how long will it take you? No later than 4 o'clock tomorrow. Look, Hilburn. It's important that I know if there's a shortage immediately. Will you call me when you finish with the audit? Thanks. Say, who's head of that Hudson Trust? Rodman Drake. Drake, huh? <laughs> I thought so. Yes? The district attorney is here now. All right, send him in. I'll see you later, Tony. I want to talk to this guy alone. Take the side door out. Okay, Rico. So long. Hello, Rick. Hello, Fred. <laughs> You're looking swell. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, you sent for me. What's on your mind? Yes, uh, sit down. Listen, Fred, you've done a lot of favors for me, haven't you? Certainly. And I've done a lot of favors for you since you've become district attorney, haven't I? That's true. Well, here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to summon the grand jury to get ready for a special session tomorrow at 4.30. What's up? The state examiner's going over the books of the Hudson Trust, the East Side Branch. And if there's one nickel short, I want indictments made out for the officers who are responsible. Why, that's one of the biggest financial institutions in this city. You bet it is, and that's why thousands of people will take it on the chin if it folds. I'm sure there's a mistake. Some very important men at the head of that organization, including Rodman Drake. Yes, and 80,000 people have got their life savings in it. They've trusted those crooks long enough. And if there's one cent missing, they're going to prison. Okay, Rico, but I hope you're wrong. I'd hate to see a big public scandal at this time. So would I, but just the same, get those indictment papers made out right away. We don't want to waste any time. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rico. Bye-bye, Fred. Well, you reached the top of the heap, eh, when you can dictate to the DA. Heap is right. <laughs> we were better off digging sewers. It was cleaner work. What's the matter with that call to my wife? Mrs. Drake isn't at home. I'm trying to reach her at the stable. Just a minute. Here's the call now. Hello? Hello? Hello, darling? Uh, you'd better call off that dinner engagement with the Wilsons tonight. Well, there's some trouble here at the office. I can't tell you on the phone. Well, you sound as if you had the jitters. Anything wrong? I don't know yet, but I may have to leave town tonight, so you better have one of my bags packed. I'll tell you all about it when I see you. All right, goodbye. Hello, Sully. <laughs> Let you and I alone. Oh, will you stop that? I've got to get these out. 
Remind me to marry you next spring, will you? Will you get out of that rich mood you're in? Rodman Drake's outside waiting to see you. Drake, eh? Send him in. Practically in. Okay, son. Gee, thanks. Go out that way, will you? Okay, go on. So long. Hey, Superintendent Batchy Galopi. Sit down, Commissioner. We're going to have company. Gentlemen. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mrs. Kappa? Over there. Oh, you're Mrs. Kappa? Yes. Oh, hello, Mr. Drake. Nice to see you again. Again? I didn't know that I'd ever met you before. Oh, yes, but it was a long, long time ago. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like to speak with you privately, if I may, please. No, you wouldn't want to see me in private. You and I are in the public eye, catch on? And anything you've got to say to me ought to be in front of people. I'm sorry, but what I have to say concerns you alone. I, I can't tell you here. I didn't think you could. Well, then, if you ladies and gentlemen will excuse me. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> Say, where do you know him before? I never met him before, and I know everybody you know. You wouldn't remember. He's very close to someone I've never had out of my mind. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, the nerve of some people. Who is that? Scaffer's secretary just phoned, said that Mr. Scaffer's invited himself here to cocktails. Huh, pretty slick. Couldn't you see him at your office? I seem to have no choice in the matter. He's on his way here now. Scaffer? I don't believe I've ever heard of him. Who is he? What does he do? Politician. Sort of an unseen power around town. Seems to hold all offices, yet none. Well, what does he want of you, Rod? A contribution, I suppose. Hmm. Well, I hope he's reasonable. <laughs> I hate to put you through this, B, but he's really quite important. We've got to see him, so let's be as nice to him as possible. Of course, dear. Excuse me. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Kaffer? Glad to see you. This is Comptroller Badger Galupi. How do you do, Mr. Galupi? Oh, well, no, it's not a Galupi. It's uh, all in one word, a Batsy Galupi. Oh, sorry. This way, gentlemen. Uh, the, uh, I want to present Mr. Scaffer. This is my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Drake? How do you do? Uh, this is Comptroller uh, Badger... Badger... Uh, Galoop. Uh, Comptroller Galoop. Uh, no, it's all one word. You say them all at once. Uh, Badger Galoop. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. Excuse me. You play very well, Mrs. Drake. Only by ear. Thanks, just the same. Do you mind playing that again? Just for me? I never use him. You know, I was just thinking, it must be very exciting being a politician, kissing babies, giving clam bakes, laying cornerstones, and so forth. 
Just what do you do, Mr. Scaffer? Me? I give advice. Well, I imagine that pays much better, doesn't it? Tell me, uh, confidentially, is there any truth in the rumor that you may run for office yourself? <laughs> Not me. Let the other boys wear the uniforms and get the glory. As long as you have the power. Oh, it must be a grand, exalted feeling to be sitting way up on top. Oh, once in a while you get hit with a brick. But the view is fine. And the climb up? Oh, that must have been very difficult. Took a lot of character and determination and fine courage. No, luck was with me. Then America's a wonderful place. Anything can happen. Apparently it can. Well, uh, Mrs. Caffer, suppose we get down to business. If it's all the same to you, I'd rather talk to you in private. Don't go, B. Whatever Mrs. Caffer has to say, I prefer that he says in front of witnesses. All right, you asked for it. Well, Mr. Drake, you're on your way to the penitentiary. What are you inferring? The grand jury's a cinch to hand down an indictment. You wouldn't like to spend 20 years in prison if you could get out of it, would you? <laughs> well, naturally not. That's what I thought. There's a way out, but it'll cost you money. Well? What is the deficit of the East Side Branch? Well, don't you think that that's my business? It happens to be mine right now. Come on, what is it? Oh, approximately four million. Then it'll cost you four million. Good heavens, Scaffold. Well, that's out of the question. I expect to pay naturally, but can't you take less? Just a minute. Let's get this record straight. I'm not after a bribe. This money's to go back into your corporation, the East Side Branch, to secure the investments of those poor suckers who trusted you. They're the ones I'm looking out for. Sending you to prison won't help them. What do you mean, prison? When people make investments, they gamble. When they gamble, they frequently lose. No one will find anything wrong with the way I've handled the East Side Branch. Listen, Drake, you're not fooling anybody. I hate to say this in front of Mrs. Drake, but there's one thing I can do, is smell a crook a mile away. And you're gonna pay for this unless you dig up four million by tomorrow afternoon. Why, that's impossible. If I had that kind of money, I wouldn't come to you. I'd put it in the Hudson Trust myself and balance the books. That's where you're wrong. If you had 50 million, you couldn't balance the books. The books are out of your hands. And that's where I come in, you understand? But I haven't got that amount of cash. I couldn't begin to raise it. Well, if you haven't got it, that's that. Wait a minute, Scaffer. Perhaps I could raise one million. All or none. Why, that's absurd. Sorry, but that's the way it stands. Thanks for the hospitality, Mrs. Drake. It's been a pleasure. Come along, Magistrate. I'm out of jail now, and I'm responsible for you, understand? I'm only doing this for your mother. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay in that cell and rot. You know anything about horses? No. Well, you're gonna learn, and you're gonna learn the hard way. You're gonna give me a job? Yeah, shoveling manure in my stables over in Jersey. And if there's one fork full of hay missing, I'll blame you. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute, I wanna see you, too. See Miss Sullivan, she'll give you a car fare. Thanks. Okay. You sent for me, Chief. What do you want? Listen, Pelkey. Four years ago, we agreed to let bygones be bygones. Yeah, I know. It was pretty swell of you, and I appreciate it. Sure, and to show your appreciation, you turn out to be a thief. I don't get you. The boys send you out to collect donations for an orphan hospital, and you turn in $11,000. Yeah, that's right. Where's the other $4,000? Well, what do you mean? You collected $15,000 and kept four for yourself. Now, where is it? I... I got in a jam. I had to use some of the dough, but I'll get it back. I give you my word I will. Sure, you got in a jam. We'll see that you get that dough back here in two weeks. Two weeks? You heard what I said. If you don't, I'll turn you over to the DA. Now, scram. Hiya, Zeke. How are you, Mr. Scalper? Uh, uh, I think you'll find everything okay. Hiya, my little petty pie. Hiya, Tit. Have a load of raw carrots. Why don't you order a good steak instead of eating this rabbit food? Listen, fat stomach, fat head. Don't forget you have an appointment over at Kelly's office at 2.30. I know it. And by the way, Mrs. Drake is waiting outside to see you. Mrs. Drake? Finish your lunch, she'll wait. I can't keep her waiting. She'll wait and like Oh, she will, will she? Well, we'll see about that. Now, listen, you. You go out there and send her right in. 
Come on, Zico boy. We've got to get this out of here in a hurry. Yes, sir. Add up, baby. Here you are. Hi, cutie. The boss in? He's in, but he's busy. Okay. Here, have some peanuts. Where do you think you are, the zoo? Hey, lady, there's a crossword puzzle on the inside page. Thank you. Oh, and Mrs. Drake, and Mr. Scaffer said he would see you as soon as he's had lunch. Oh, thank you. Yes? Didn't I tell you to send Mrs. Drake right in? Oh, yes, I phoned for the taxi. It ought to be here most any minute. Oh. What was your name again? Mrs. Drake. Oh, you were waiting to see Mr. Scaffer, weren't you? Yes. It'll be quite some time yet. Listen, bird brain. If you don't send her right in, I'll break your neck. Oh, two tickets for the wrestling match. Okay, I'll order them right away. Sure, I'd love to go, honey. Bye. Oh. Come in now, Mr. Drake. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, I, I hope you'll pardon my intruding, Mr. Scaffer, but I want to talk to you. It's a pleasure. What can I do for you, Mrs. Drake? About this shortage. How soon must you have the money? Today, four o'clock, no later. Oh. And must it be in cash? Cash or negotiable securities. I see. And where does the money go? To me. To you? Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. I don't get it. I'll get it into the Hudson Trust in a way that I'd rather not explain. And when the state examiners go over the books, they'll find the corporation solvent. And there'll be no indictment? There'll be no reason for one. Yes? Don't forget that appointment with Kelly at 2.30. And what's going on in there? Wouldn't you like to know? Drake's putting up one million. Where's the other three coming from? Does it matter? Well, not to me. You'll have all the money by four o'clock, Mr. Scaffer. He's a lucky guy to have you. He's my husband. Do you mind if I think you're swell for doing this? Not at all. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Yes. Tell him I'll see him next summer at two o'clock. By the way, where's your husband? He's at home. He's leaving town this afternoon, though, flying down to Cuba. Why? He seems to feel that if he isn't here, he won't have to answer any embarrassing questions. Well, uh, if he wants to go, I guess it's all right. Uh, but it isn't necessary. Mr. Scaffer, I want you to know that I'm sorry for the way I behaved last evening. And I think what you're doing for these people, the investors, is really quite wonderful. Do you mind if... Excuse me. What is it? Say, you better get rid of that dame or I'll tell her husband. Yeah, she can go to lunch. Take two hours. Oh, uh, take the rest of the afternoon off. Just a minute. Did I hear you say you like spaghetti? No. Do you? Yes. I know a swell spot. Spaghetti, raviolas, red wine, and oh, I know you'd like it. How nice. Will you have dinner with me there tonight? No, thanks. Tomorrow night? Uh-uh. -oh. Well, when will you have dinner with me? Never. Why? Well, because you're in the public eye. My husband's mixed up in a scandal. You know, it might embarrass you. Oh, a knife drawer, eh? Goodbye. Goodbye. You better not come any further, dear. Goodbye. I still don't know why you're running away. 
Mr. Scaffer said it wasn't necessary. Darling, my experience with politicians has been they can't always do the things that they think they can. I'm playing safe, that's all. Oh, but isn't it rather awkward? What shall I say to people when they ask questions? Tell them anything. Tell them that I've had a nervous breakdown. Bye, dear. Oh, don't forget to put a bet on Lady Anne for me. Bye, darling. Take care of yourself. Y'all are day, isn't it? Looking for something? Yes, just my car. It was parked right here. Oh, have you seen anything of a blue limousine? Sure, I sent it away. You did? Why? You won't need it. I'm taking you home. Come on, get in. Oh, thank you. A taxi! What did I do now? Never mind. Well, I wasn't speeding. Officer, he didn't do anything. I know it. Well, then why are you stopping us? Why, Mrs. Drake. <laughs> Fancy finding you here. <laughs> it's certainly a small world, isn't it? Well, since you have the whole city government behind you, I guess there's nothing else to do. Goodbye. Just a moment. What's your hurry? I sort of like your company. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's all right. Really, when are you going to accept that invitation to have a spaghetti dinner with me? Never, if I can help it. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because my eyes are so blue. Goodbye. I got 23 for the quarter. Your watch is slow. I got 22 and 4. Johnny was choking her to death. <laughs> that's the horse you got to beat. White Wings, the favorite. Oh, that's White Wings, eh? He looks pretty fit. Got the best record of any horse in the race. by any chance? Yeah, but not by any chance. I brought my horse this time. There's all the earmarks of the plot. I was shipping to Narragansett, and I read you entered up here, and I changed my mind. If we can't eat spaghetti together, at least our horses can run together. And on top of that, I might beat you. Who's riding for you? Haley. Haley? <laughs> well, you're giving me 15 pounds. I don't think your horse can do it. Oh, you don't think so? Would you like to make a little bet? How much? Not money. There's no fun betting that. Let's make it something we really hate to lose. What'll it be? Well, there's nothing I'd hate to lose more than the chance to take you to dinner. How about that? All right. And if my horse wins, you'll never ask me again? Those are murderous odds, lady. But it's a bet. White 
Queen. Don't fail me now. Go out there and clean up that crack. I got plenty of dough on that sneezer of yours. We'll do a bit, sir. Good luck. Number one, White Wings, Enrico Scaffa's entry. Number two, Lady Anne, wearing the colors of Mrs. Rodman Drake. Number three, Battling Knight. Hello, Enrico. Hello, Bruce. Glad to see you. What do you think of the lineup? Come on, pick me a winner, will you? It's anybody's race. Don't you like your own entry, White Wings? I never bet on my own horse. He carries enough burden. Well, Lady Anne looks good to me. She may look good to you, but I don't think she can go the distance. Oh, is that so? Oh. How do you do, Mrs. Drake? How do you do? What odds are you getting? My horse is even money. Yours? Four to one. You're practically having dinner with me now. Maybe. Miss Gaffer? Yes? White Wings is now eight to five. Eight to five? What's Lady Anne? Down to two and a half to one. Okay, Tom. Right? Someone else has noticed the weight you're carrying. Now at the post, White Wings is acting like a veteran. The assistant starters are having trouble with Lady Anne. Vanderlip breaks through. Lady Anne acting badly. They're off! Looks like I'll have to eat dinner with my horse. Bye. Come along, Polly. What's breaking your heart? I had the money to buy a new purple packet. So I said to myself, Bachigalupi, why don't you have the money and the purple packet too? So I put all my money on that goat you own white wings, and now I got no money and no purple packet. What'd you lose? Plenty. I lost an opportunity, a great opportunity. What do you mean, opportunity? Oh, skip it. You wouldn't understand. Well, looks like I'm on the loose tonight. Listen, I tell you what you do. You go out and dig up a good hot crap game and come back and pick me up. Okay. Yes? Oh, hello there, sweetie pie. None of that. Say, did you pull that cab horse of yours so that Drake Dame could win? No, he was transporting too much weight. Was she on his back? I lost 150. Women. So I laid 200 on her horse for you. It paid two and a half to one. <laughs> Kiss me, Lammy Pie. <laughs> Never mind the clowning. Say, when are you coming back to work? Work? <laughs> I'm taking the week off. Come in. You can handle that better than I can. Yes, yes, you take care of the office till I get back. Aren't you ready yet? Ready? Ready for what? Well, we're having dinner together, aren't we? But my horse lost, and I wasn't to ask you again. That was our bargain, wasn't it? Exactly. But there's no reason why I can't ask you, is there? Well, uh, will you have dinner with me? Of course. And, uh, uh, might I come in? Please do. Thank you. Do you mind if I sit down? No, not at all. Go right ahead. Uh, can I get you something? Oh, no, thank you. Hadn't you better finish your phone call? Oh, yes. Excuse me. Oh! Don't you hello me. I heard every word. That dame. This is really more than I expected. Well, shall we hurry? 
Oh, yes, yes. I forgot all about that. Hello, operator. Get me the Evergreen, quick. What are you doing that for? Oh, I've uh, canceled our reservations. Oh, but I already telephoned and got them back. Oh, swell. Operator, never mind that call. I'll be with you in a minute. Rico, found a great game. Everybody's there. Joe Malone, Pete and Tony the Greek. Beautiful suckers. Uh, maybe we can get back what he lost today. Uh, maybe I can have that purple packet after all. Governor, here's a thousand dollars. I don't want to see you until you lose it all. Catch you later. Ready? My, my, you are in a hurry, aren't you? <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to change your mind. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Hello, Enrico. How are you, Scarpa? Hello, Pelkey, John, Frank. Be with me, Mrs. Drake. Mrs. Scarpa, please with me, please. Who's the dame? Mrs. Rodman Drake, wife of the vice president of the Hudson Trust. She's got more dough than you could win on the Irish sweepstakes. Well, seems to be doing all right for himself, huh? Well, for a man who keeps his name and face out of the newspapers, you seem to be quite a celebrity. Don't let that fool you. They either want something or they're afraid of me. Ah, but it's flattering just the same. You know, you're not doing your reputation any good by being seen with me. Nonsense. I'm probably the woman in the place. Oh, uh, what do you have? Oh, but I've already ordered my telephone. <laughs> you think of everything, don't you? What wine would you like? Oh, uh... Champagne would be all right. Good. A waiter. Yes, madam. Will you bring six bottles of Lansing, 1926? Yes, madam. Six. Say, this is going to be a night. There. <laughs> That's the wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, why did you order six bottles of champagne? Mm -hmm. Because I knew you were going to make love to me. And I wouldn't have permitted it if I hadn't. Why? Oh. Because I'm really a snob. I've had tradition and prejudice drilled into me as long as I can remember. They're not easily overcome. Oh, I've tried. But they're still there, getting in the way. And I didn't want them tonight. B. Hmm? I've loved you ever since I first saw you. I've never had you out of my mind. Everything I've done, Every rung of climb. You've been just above me. Shaping my life for me. Give And oh, so far away. May I kiss you? Yes. How do you do, Mr. Drake? Hello, you. A nice trip. Fine, thank you. Mrs. Drake and I still have the same suite? Yes, for ten. Shall I ring? Never mind, I'll go right up. I want to surprise her. Oh, yes. Flame across the board? Yes. Oh, Mr. Drake. Oh, hello, Mr. Uh, Comptroller. Uh, you and Mr. Scaffer here for the races? Yeah, we come down for the races. Oh, oh hi. I'd like to see Mr. Scaffer. Tell him who's asking for him. Thank you. Oh, why don't you and Mr. Scaffer have dinner with Mrs. Drake and me tonight? With Mrs. Drake and you? Yes. Okay, where? Uh, at the Evergreen, say, uh, 8 o'clock. Evergreen, 8 o'clock. Fine. Thank you. Who's the big brass hat? Well, that's Drake, the vice president of the Hudson Trust. That's the guy the scarper took over the hook. You don't say. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. I remember that jam. 
Where's he been? He's been hiding down in Cuba. Cuba, huh? Well, good night, boys. I think I'll put the body in the frame. Good night, fellas. Oh, B! B! Oh, B! B! Good night. It's been lovely. Why do you look at me like that? This has been the greatest night of my life. And I want to remember you just as you stand there. You talk as if I were going to fly away. Do you think you're kidding? Things look different in the bright sunlight. It's an even bet that when you wake up in the morning and think this over, you'll forget all about me. I'll never forget you. Good night. Good night. Fugitive returns, eh? Yes, Kaffer wired me that everything was taken care of, so I took the first plane. And am I glad to be back home. Oh, things were terrible down there. Hot, dull, lonely. I'm sorry I missed the races. <laughs> Lady Anne gave quite an account of herself, according to reports. I suppose so. You suppose? Well, how are you, darling? Anything wrong? I didn't expect to. Well, how about celebrating the Wanderer's return? Let's give a nice dinner party at the at the Evergreen and uh, invite some friends. I'm afraid not. What? Well, what is it? Aren't you glad to see me? I know this isn't going to make very much difference to you. What won't? I'm in love with another man. What? And I want a divorce as quickly and as quietly as possible. Has he asked you to marry him? No. No? <laughs> well, don't you think you're taking just a little bit too much for granted? I think the gentleman will marry me. Oh, he will. I practically asked him. What? Mm hmm Who is it? It's Scaffer. Scaffer? Why, you're crazy. That cheap politician. Why, it's insane. He's only after your money. Well, after all. Isn't that what you married me for? Why? Hey, Scaffer. For a very usual and ancient reason. I love him. Well, you certainly picked a fine time to tell me. I haven't any money. I'm on thin ice at the office, and on top of that, the publicity of a divorce. Well, that certainly puts me on a nice spot. I'm sorry. I know that our marriage has been a washout, but I've always felt that I could depend upon you. Please try to stick it out. Maybe I can take it a little later. But right now, I... I need you so badly. Please. You go to bed. We'll talk about it in the morning. Missed the workout this morning. What's your clocker in, Joe? Five eights and one two. Freezing? 
No, under wraps. Oh, fine. Good boy. <laughs> Little lady, do you realize you've complicated my life considerably? Hmm? Yeah. We'll straighten that out right now. B. What's the matter? I guess it was the champagne after all. I apologize. You're lying. We both love each other and you know it. Yes. Yes, of course I know it. Well, things have changed since last night. How? I can't leave Rod now. See, you see, Enrico, he isn't like you. He has nothing within himself to fall back on. His name, his position, what people think of him, those are the things that sustain him. You take them away, there's just nothing left. And that's just what I'd be doing to him if I divorced him now. I guess you're right. You can't kick a guy when he's down. Thanks. Well, I... Uh, I've agreed to stay with him for the next few months, and... In the meantime, I don't think we should see each other. Enrico. Don't think too unkindly of me, please. Of course not. Bye. Goodbye, B. Yes? Uh, Mr. Drake? Yes. I'm John Pelkey from the district attorney's office, and this is Mark Cooper, my associate. Oh, yes, how do you do? Mr. Drake, we'd like to talk to you. Fine, go right ahead. Well, uh, this is confidential. Couldn't we... Uh... Oh, surely. Come right in. Uh, <clears throat> sit down. Thanks. May I offer you a cigar? No, thanks. Cigar? Would you have a drink, sir? No, thanks. Well, just what can I do for you, sir? Mr. Drake, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. Yes? Did you give Enrico Scaffa a lot sum of money? I don't think I should answer that question. Well, if you don't answer now, you'll answer on the witness stand. It was to quash a possible indictment, wasn't it? I'm not going to answer any questions. How much did you give him? Come on, Drake, quit stalling. You're only making it hard on yourself. Look here, I don't know what you gentlemen want, but I have done nothing wrong. Mr. Scaffer offered to help me. I knew he was a public official. I accepted his assistance. There's nothing wrong in that. How much did you give him? Four million. Four million? How would you like to get a considerable amount of that back? Why, that's impossible. Scaffer deposited that money in the corporation. That's what you think. What are you inferring? That Scaffer kept that money himself? You're going to be a very valuable witness for us, Mr. Drake. By the way, have you got anything to prove that you gave him that sum? No, I'm sorry, I haven't. Uh, nothing in writing? No. Wait a minute. I have a copy of the cablegram that Scapper sent me in Cuba telling me that everything was all right, that I could return. Is that of any use? It'll do. Oh, uh, Mr. Pelkey, Mr. Cooper, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? You'll probably hear from us this afternoon. If you're not in, leave word where we can get hold of you right away. I shall be delighted. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Goodbye. Well, what a fine crook you picked out to marry. Good heavens, are you in more trouble? Not I, Scaffa. How his heart must have bled for those poor depositors on the east side. Why, B, do you realize that that dirty crook stole our money? Not one penny of it went into the corporation. 
believe that. No? Well, just the same, the district attorney wants me to tell everything I know to the grand jury. That's a fine way to show your appreciation. Oh, yes. I suppose I should be very grateful to Scaffer for all that he's done for me. Why, that dirty blackmailer. I'll help put him in jail if it's the last thing that I ever do. My rod! And as for you, go to him. He's yours. I present him to you, all wrapped in cellophane. Now go pack your any longer. Do you hear? Get out! Well, we got him. What did I tell you? We'll get the district attorney on the phone right away. I'll have Scaffer on the spot in half an hour. Taking bribes, eh? <laughs> Hot dog. Mr. Scaffer in? No, he's not here, and he won't be back until Monday. That suits us fine. What are you doing with those papers? Who wants to know? I'll ask the questions, baby. We're from the DA's office. Is this Scaffer's private file? That's for me to know and for you to find out. Enrico? B. I didn't expect to see you so soon. What's wrong? Enrico, what did you do with the money I gave you? I put it in the Hudson Trust. Where else? There seems to be a difference of opinion. The district attorney is investigating it. The district attorney? <laughs> I'll take care of him. And there won't be any trouble? There won't be any cause. I've never taken a bribe or offered one, so forget about it. I knew it. Incidentally, something just happened to make me change my mind. About what? About Rod. You know, you made me an offer this morning. If it still stands, I accept it. You mean you'll marry me? Uh-huh. Then we'll get married right away. Don't you think I'd better get a divorce first? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Now, let's see. Where can you go? There's Paris, Reno. How about Reno? Fine. How soon can you leave? Anytime. Oh, that's swell. I'll charter a plane. You can leave right now. Excuse me. Hello? Well, it's about time you answer that phone. You better get down here right away. Things are popping fast. They just moved your files out. They got a court order. They can't do that. Oh, they can't, huh? Well, they're doing it. Put one of them on. Okay. Hey, muscle bound. On the phone. Hello. Say, who issued that phony court order? District Attorney's office. Yeah? We're not taking orders for you anymore. What's the matter? I gotta go to New York right away. Well, I'm going with you. Gentlemen, the reason for this special session of the extraordinary grand jury is a matter of pressing importance involving the taking of a large bribe by a person high in the political life of this city. I have here a cable sent by Enrico Scaffa to Mr. Rodman Drake in Havana, Cuba. This cable obviously refers to some personal matter which I feel bears investigation. Well, Sonny, what's the lowdown? They're giving everything the Rush Act. They just called a special session of the grand jury. Who started it? Your good friend, Pelkey. Here we go. They've started already. They've got Drake up there to testify, and they're going to rush the thing through. Well, Joe, you're my attorney. What's your advice? I think we'd better go into your office. Okay. Stay here. I thought there were a few things we ought to talk over alone. Did you take a bribe from Drake when you hushed up that Hudson Trust Corporation shortage? 
You know the answer to that. A lot of money passed through your hands, didn't it? Yes, but none of it stuck. Could you explain to the grand jury just what you did with the money? No. Why not? Because it would incriminate a couple of innocent people who helped me deposit it after the state examiners had the books. Did you monkey with the books? Yes, yes. Why? I wanted to make him think that the deposits had been on the ledges all along. Regardless of the reason, that's falsifying records and a felony carrying two to 15 years. You've got to get out of town right away. Miss Sullivan, will you come in here for a moment, please? Now, I'll squash this bribery charge if I can, and then take steps to straighten out the matter of the books, but it won't be easy. Uh, Miss Sullivan, call the airport and charter a private plane in my name. I've already got one. It's waiting at Newark. You can leave for Canada right away. It's your only sensible move. Okay. Sully, get a hold of Joe and tell him to pack the rest of my things. I'll meet him at the airport in an hour. Okay. You've got to get out of the jurisdiction of this court until we beat this indictment. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Ready? Oh, you're just in time. Sit down. What happened? They just called a special session of the grand jury. We're flying to Canada. You can file your divorce there. Why Canada? i got to get out of the country. Why? Elk and the DA are trying to indict me on that Hudson Trust. It happened so fast, I didn't have a chance. You mean to say you're, you're running away? No, I'm just disappearing for a while. But you told me you did nothing wrong. Can't you stay here and fight these people? No, it's better that I go and let my attorney battle it out here for me. Oh. What's wrong? You're doing the same thing my husband did. But, dear, you... you don't understand. No. When Rob left on that plane for Cuba, every bitter feeling I ever had for him died. Beatrice, you can't do that. Let me explain, please. All the explanations in the world can't change the fact that you're running away without even trying to fight back. And I thought I fell in love with a man. Sorry. My mistake. Everything is ready. Your car's downstairs. Hey, what's the matter? Come on. I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? You can't stay here. You heard what I said. Cancel that plane. I'm not going. Rico! Hey, wait! You can't do it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Rico, here, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? What's happened? Well, he wants to go to the grand jury, and we want him to get out of town right away. Oh, Rico, you can't do that. The plane's waiting, and I insist that you leave the Please, please, Rico. Don't be silly. Come on, Rico, listen to me. Don't be stubborn. Come it's on, absolutely please come necessary. Back, you? you get out of town. Mr. Hilbert, you and your assistants officially examined the books of the Hudson Investment Trust Corporation, did you not? Yes, sir, we did. And when you examined the books of the Hudson Investment Trust Corporation, did you find any record of a $4 million deposit made by Enrico Scaffold? None whatsoever, Mr. District Attorney. Mr. Hilburn, tell this grand jury. If this deposit had been made, is it possible that it could have escaped your attention? It could not, Mr. Foreman. That's all for the present. Thank you. Scabber, you have no right to be here. What do you want? Listen, you and the grand jury can do whatever you like, but first you're going to hear what I have to say. If you think you can hang a bribery charge on me, you're just wasting your time. Mr. Foreman and gentlemen of the jury, I'll admit you do have a charge against me. A legitimate one. I falsified the records of the Hudson Trust. I did take $4 million from Mr. Drake, but every cent of it went back into his corporation. Who helped you? That's none of your business. I'll take the rap. Mr. Foreman, this is a judicial body. Tell Mr. Scaffer he's in contempt. You're telling me nothing. I'm telling you. On May 28th, the night I had dinner at your home, what was the deficit of the East Side branch? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You know very well what I'm talking about. Now answer me. Mr. Foreman, I object to being questioned by this man. Ah, oh, then now you were the one who wanted a witness. Well, that witness is here now. Would you like me to bring her in? Maybe that would refresh your memory. No, that won't be necessary. Well, then come on. What was the deficit? The deficit was four million. You're positive it was four million? Yes. Okay. You're the state examiner, aren't you? Yes. Did you examine the books of the Hudson Trust on May 28th? Yes, I did. The following day at four o'clock, what was the deficit? There was no deficit. You're positive? Yes, it was solvent. All right, then. 
I think that tells you what happened to the four million. Now go ahead, you've got a perfect right to indict me for falsifying those records. But if you gentlemen don't think that saving the life earnings of 80,000 investors and keeping one of the biggest financial institutions from going under, averting a public scandal that would have shaken the confidence of every bank deposit investor in this city, then it's your duty to indict me and send me to jail. Mr. Foreman, I've been greatly misled in this whole matter. And I think you'll agree that we need not proceed any further with this investigation. It is ordered that this investigation be discontinued. Obviously, there's been no bribery. Bravo! Bravo! Rico! Now we go celebrate. We go out and get drunk. Eh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got something else to do. Come on. We get drunk anyhow, though. <laughs> Hello, Scaffer. Hello, Pelkey. Now we go out and get drunk? Not yet. I still got something to do. Mrs. Drake in? Madame is asleep. I gotta see her. But I tell you, Madame is asleep. Oh! Oh! Take care of it. Oh, leave me alone! <laughs> leave me alone! <laughs> you get in here? Get up and get dressed. What for? You're going to Reno. Reno? Now, how dare you burst into my... Business? You heard what I said. I chartered a plane. It leaves at 4 o'clock. You're going to Reno and I'm staying here. There's a lot of guys in this town I gotta take care of. Accusing me of taking a bribe. Why, I've been on the level all my life. It's stupid guys like Pelkey that are dishonest, a dirty rat. I kept him out of jail a dozen times. A little prosperity and he gets my hat. And that goes for you, too. Any more of that and I'll bust you in the jaw. Listen, lady, I hold a red flag on you. Whether I'm a big shot, a fugitive, or a jailbird is my business. Your job is to love me and love me till you die. Now, come on and kiss me. Okay. Come on, hurry up. Again. Again. That's it. You're doing much better. I don't ever get tired. <laughs> <laughs> 